Hey guys, in this video we're going to finish up the x-axis for the G0602CNC conversion. And uh, I'm not going to go over the Fusion 3D model because we did that in an earlier video. And the only extra thing to show you or really talk about is this front plate, which you haven't seen. Um, you saw the model in that earlier video, but you haven't seen the plate itself. So besides just kind of drilling and tapping, there's not a lot to it. And you could really make this just about any size you want. Uh, on the back side, there is one little area machined. It's a circle that uh, gives some clearance for the stepper motor. And you'll see that more in a little bit later shot. Uh, but for now, we're going to jump into the lead screw. Uh, when I was trying to get this perpendicular to the uh, the front of the carriage, I tried a bunch of uh, squaring methods. Um, but what I ended up ultimately doing was just kind of using my eyes and siding right down this uh, from, you know, this angle and trying to make sure it looked perpendicular. And I, I tried to take as many measurements as I could. Um, I don't actually have a, a machinist square or any kind of precision square. Um, but when I did try and square it, it looked wrong. And so then I would go back and, and eyeball it into position. And that's what I ended up eventually going with was just kind of an eyed position. And it worked out great. And I could tell because my bearing block on the back of the lathe uh, turned out great. Or the location of that bearing block. Uh, as far as the front bearing block goes, you really want to make sure it's not tipped left or right. And all I did was sight the top of the bearing block with the underside of the carriage. And then using the same techniques I've used for every other hole that I've drilled and tapped on this lathe, uh, I went ahead and drilled and tapped these holes. And uh, like you've seen me do previously, I used this, uh, 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 what do you call this, like a drill, um, <laughs> I forgot what I even call it. Uh, I use this as a guide to make sure I can drill and tap nice and square. And then I install one bolt first. And then after I've got the bearing block mounted, then I went ahead and laid out the rest of the uh, the bolt holes for drilling and tapping. Now, I did use, uh, I did drill and tap all four of these bolt holes. Although I would say you could probably get away with just using two. Um, you can see here that when I slide the, uh, cross slide in and out it doesn't bind and I'm not going to let you listen to the audio but there's no sound or very very little sound so I know that it wasn't uh, scratching its way uh, into the bearing block it, it was a really really good alignment and I'm quite pleased with it uh, one thing you'll need to do to the bearing block is machine out this uh, little corner and you can see I went about 310 thou wide and uh, that is to allow the cross slide to clear on its way out. You can see the gib would smack that corner if it weren't machined. Another thing uh, that I didn't realize until after I had gotten the, the lathe completely assembled and I'd begun testing it was that I was getting a lot of backlash in this front ball screw. Now, um, I did some research online and I found other people complaining about the same problem. And what I think has happened is Linear Motion Bearing 2008 has either been selling uh, old stock of bearing blocks that were made incorrectly years ago or they're still being made incorrectly. And I don't know if, if that uh, eBay store actually makes their own bearing blocks or if they get them from a supplier. But what the result is or, or what the issue is, is the uh, bearing pocket is machined too deep and it allows the two bearings to, uh, to slide forward and backwards inside the block. Uh, one other problem I found uh, upon disassembly is that my bearings were not uh, installed correctly. They should be back to back and uh, they weren't. They were both facing forward. Uh, the front one was correct. You can see right there. Uh, so that's just the cap. You can see where the bearing pushes against. And, and I took a lot of measurements to try and figure out exactly how much slop I had. And I'll show you some more of that in a second. You can see that front bearing is in there correctly, but the back bearing was in the same position. What I ended up doing was just making this thin shim to go in between the bearings. And that uh, pretty much completely eliminated the backlash, but it wasn't the only thing I needed to do. You can see mine ended up being about 23 thou thick. That's how much backlash I measured. The outside's about an inch, the inside uh, 715. You could really make this just about any size. You just want it to fit on the uh, back of one of the bearings without causing inter any interference. The easiest way to remove the bearings is to just unscrew the screw and let them push right out. So uh, here you can see, uh, oh, it looks like 
so I've actually had them apart and fixed their orientation. That's how they should go back to back. Also, you'll notice there's no grease in there, just a really light oil. So what I did was I packed them with some marine grease that I got at uh, the local auto parts store. I've been using that quite a bit. And then again, the shim goes in between the two bearings. And uh, I guess we'll speed this up. Uh, that actually worked really well. So there is one other problem. You can see I'm fighting pushing it in, and that's just because the grease is, is creating an, an air pocket. There's one other problem with uh, I had with one of the bearing blocks. None of my other bearing blocks had this problem. But there are these little black um, spacers, and I'm going to show you those here in just a second. Um, oh, I guess I'm showing you some feeler gauges. Uh, so it, it, there ended up being a small gap between the face plate and the bearing block, but it's not a problem. So... Uh, see this little brash shim that I made pushes against this little black spacer. And let me pop that spacer out. Um, the spacers on all of my other bearing blocks was long enough that this wasn't an issue. But on this one, my uh, my square nut that, that I would put on would actually jam up against the seal on the bearing block. So this little brass shim, all it does is help push that black spacer out and you can see it's sticking a little bit proud right there by the threads. And then that way when I put this nut on, the nut can contact that uh, spacer and not the bearing block uh, seal. On the back side, uh, the problem I had was my bearing was too tight. Um, I couldn't quite get it on the shaft. This is a custom, uh, what did I say earlier? 12 millimeter. I think it's a 12, 12, Uh, so all I did was just jog the axis back and forth while I had a little sandpaper on there and just took a, uh, probably a thousandths off is all. And the bearing fit on just fine after that. The other thing that I had to do was, and you'll see this in just a minute, I had to sand the bearing block pocket so that the bearing would go in without being quite so tight. Uh, this rear bearing block is not absolutely critical. Um, if you have watched my G0704 CNC conversion, the Y-axis on my mill does not have a rear bearing block and the screw just kind of floats and it's perfectly fine. So if you don't want to install this rear bearing block, uh, don't install it. It's, it's not going to ruin anything. The main reason why I wanted it was so I don't accidentally jog the cross slide too far to the back of the lathe and push the ball nut um, off of the ball screw because if that happens all of your bearings all your ball bearings fall out you're going to spend hours putting everything back together it's going to be a giant nightmare um that's why i installed it now of course i also have soft limits set in linux cnc and a limit switch and you'll see more of that in a later video so really there's there's two fail safes uh, ahead of me running the cross slide off the back of the uh the screw but again for peace of mind i went ahead and put it on there now, just like you might guess, we're also going to just do a little machining on this rear bearing block uh, because, again, the gib is going to crash into it. And, oh, one other thing I wanted to point out. Um, I accidentally measured my screw about the thickness of the bearing too short. If you go to my GrabCat account and check the, the uh, dimensions of my custom screw, I've updated that drawing so that uh, if you decide to make a custom screw, uh, you're screw will go uh, it'll hold that bearing a little bit further back into the uh, into the bearing block so you can see there i took some measurements and actually i just band sawed this off i didn't even take it to the mill you can see it's uh, 5 16 wide and about an eighth inch deep and then uh, the same thing you've seen me do several times uh, uh, as far as drilling and tapping the holes to mount the bearing block and uh, yeah it, uh, no big deal so uh, let's go ahead and show you the full assembly. So this is the the new apron, and you can see I've got the standoffs mounted to it. Uh, this is held together with two screws on the carriage, which are 5 16 and then uh, two more to that ball nut mount, also 5 16 bolts. Uh, here is the lead screw. You can see it mounted with the uh, ball nut mount. Uh, and... Um, yeah, when you go to tighten this, uh, when you tighten these square nuts on, you just want to get it tight enough that it doesn't feel sloppy. You don't really want to over tighten or you're going to add drag. Uh, make sure you use blue thread locker on that, uh, that short screw that I just showed you. And here you can see that pocket I was talking about on the back of the, uh, the plate. And that is to allow some clearance for the stepper motor. 
One other thing I need to show you um, for mounting the stepper motor, I just used nylocks, and I actually had to grind the nylocks down to get them to fit uh, down in those stepper stepper motor pockets. Uh, and it's a little trashy, but it did work. I believe those are quarter. They're either quarter twenty or ten thirty two, whichever looks like it's right. I think maybe maybe they're ten thirty two. I don't know. Anyway, here you can see how the whole assembly works. It drops down on those slots. I tighten the right side a little bit, then I push the left side down. That allows me to tension the belt, and the entire thing's assembled. So uh, that's it. If you have any questions, uh, scroll down and uh, leave your comments and questions down there. And um, I guess I'll start working on the next video. I'll see you guys later.